You walk into any tackle shop and there's a massive range of method feeder hook baits. Washers, wafters, mini boilies, wowzers, pop-ups, all those different colors, every color of the rainbow, every, every color you can imagine. Now I've got my own ideas, which colors work in certain situations, but we're here on the bank today, two different colors in my hand, some seven mil wowzers, some white, some red, two rods, identical setups, and we're gonna put both those colors to the test to see which one comes out on top. Now, any of you guys that have seen any of this sort of like two rod setup that I've been doing in the past with the flavorings, you'll know that everything's as controlled as I can get it. We, we try and catch some fish. I've got one rod um, with one bait, one rod with the other bait, and we're gonna be using method feeders or hybrid feeders to catch the fish. Now, again, flavorings I think are a massive part of our fishing now when you feed a fish in. We've learned from those flavorings videos. If any of you haven't seen them, subscribe. You'll see all the different videos. You'll get notif notifications when the new video pops up. It's free to do. You don't have to do anything, but click subscribe. But you know that those flavorings do make a difference. So today I'm using the cool water pellet soak. I think it's a really safe sort of flavoring to use. It's worked really well for carp on those last couple of videos that I've done. I've danced my pellets in that stuff, and we're gonna put one of these on the hook to see which one comes out on top. You guys know how this works by now. If you've watched any of the flavorings videos that I've done in the past, this is gonna be almost exactly the same as those sort of scenarios. So two rods, two identical sets of kit. It's the same setup actually. I've not even changed the shock leaders to the last time we went out to Boston testing the Robin Red versus the Swim Stim Cool Water flavoring. So today I'm using little tiny hybrid feeders. I wanna feed a really small parcel of bait and I think those little tiny hybrid feeders just do that slightly better than a method feeder. The two hook baits that I've gone for are a white wowzer, they're called, and also a, let's just see what these are called, they might have a name, a sort of a pinky wowzer. So I've gone for two contrasting colors. You can see there, two contrasting colors. And I think it'd be really interesting to see which one comes out as a winner. So obviously in my head, when I'm thinking about hook baits and all these sort of wafters and washers and little pop-ups and little mini boilies. I usually go on the rules of clear water, nice bright bait. You know, we know that bread works in the winter, bright sweet corn, those sort of bright baits work in the winter. And then when the water's a little bit more coloured, sort of a red or an orange or a pink. Now, a bit of a backstory to these colours. I do loads of law fishing throughout the winter. Obviously, perch, pike, zander. I know the predatory species, but I still think that they see colours in the same sort of way as the carp that we're targeting. And we'll often go out, and there'll be four or five of us who'll go out on the bank, and it becomes apparent during the day that a coloured lure, you know, a particular colour, outscores all the other ones. And that might be orange, pink, it might be white, but usually the brighter, i.e., white, works in the clear water, and then sort of like orange and pinks and reds, they work in the coloured water. So that works with pike, zander, perch, when I'm law fishing. I think it works when I'm carp fishing, but again, I can't be 100% sure. That's what we're gonna try out today. So let's just briefly touch on the little hybrid feeder setup. Anyone, again, if you follow any of my stuff, know that I like to use a little short stem at this time of year. I'm using the little tiny hybrid, the size, you know, it's about the size of a 50 pence piece. It's 24 gram. And because I'm using the short stem, I've put some softer elastic in there. So I'm using the pink shock core from Midder. Really nice, soft elastic. It's bulletproof, really. It's, it's, it's really tough. It's as tough as woodpecker lips, put it that way. It just doesn't break. Now, hook, hook length-wise, I've gone for three inches. I've used 016, and I've used a size 12 hook, and I've actually used a little bait spike on the, on the hair. That's just really so I can push it into the bait, not breaking the baits by using a little bait spike, so quick and easy. And also, the added benefit is the bait's not fixed on the on the hair. So if I get a big fish and he's thrashing around in the net and the bait gets caught in the mesh of the landing net, it's not gonna break the hair, it's just gonna pull the bait off. So that's another little bonus for those using those little bait spikes. To keep everything um, nice and controlled, we've got two spots. I've lined up with two pallets on the far side. I'm gonna cast halfway across the lake today. There's not many people on the lake, so I'll get away with chucking halfway across the lake. I'll stick the, both the rods up at 27 meters, and I'm gonna chuck out, as always, <laughs> as close to each other time-wise as possible, so no one rod is in the water for any length of time longer than the other. 
We'll stop watch everything and we'll see the results. So you know how my mind works by now. We've got the little red bait there. That's going on the right hand side, half a red, half a right. We'll keep that in our head all day and we'll easily remember that, won't we? So I've lined up with that pallet on the far side. Chuck it out. Sink the line. In the rest. And we've got the white. We're going to chuck that to the left hand side. I don't want to, I don't want to chuck them too far away from each other. I want to still chuck them in a similar sort of area. So we're only chucking maybe five meters away from each other five six meters away from each other it's just adjust the rest stopwatch on and see if we can get a bite so then folks, it's taken a while, but we've got the first fish. As you can see, the wind all of a sudden has changed around. It's blown into our bank. My old mate Dan's here, editor of Match Fishing, ready to do his feature. And we'll see, see what we've got here, but they're not massive fish in this lake. I'd say three, four pound is an average size, but it's an ideal, obviously, testing ground for this sort of thing. You can see there, the, it's the white that's gone round first. Again, as always, we'll uh, there you go. He's in the net. As always, we'll swap the rods over if something becomes a little bit too one-sided. So we'll see if it's the area rather than the bait. But so far. It's one nil to the white. Put them in a net, Dan, because we'll want some pictures, won't we? Beautiful little common. Cracking fish. Right. What I'll do now, reel in the right hand rod. We don't want one rod out there longer than the other one. We'll bait up. And have another chuck out and see if we can repeat repeat that always a fresh bait obviously there is a bit of smell to these baits we're not too important i'm not too sure how important the smell is on these sort of baits but a fresh bait is has got to be better than the one that's been in the water for a while To be fair, that's sort of the result I expected, the white one going first, because the water is clear. You can see a long way down today. Is that rod sorted? So in there, I'm not putting loads of bait in the, in the feeder, just enough to cover Cover the rim, really. Hitting the clip, and as always, like with all your method feeder fishing, let the feeder sink. Don't move the feeder once it's in the water. The wind's all of a sudden got up. with rain as well yeah it really pleasant to go with it beautiful so the trap set let's see what happens on this chuck we've got set the stopwatch again so we've got white on the right on the left hand side red on the right 
I think my money's on the white to go again, if I'm honest. So that was a pretty quick fish. Again, on the white. If I was a betting man, I'd have won my money, wouldn't I? Just over four minutes that's been in. So just coming up to five. Again, that's why it's really nice to have the stopwatch out. Gives you a nice feel for the day. I mean, I always like a nice bright bait when the water's clearing. Obviously you guys, hopefully you'll be able to see how clear the water is. You can see at least maybe a foot down, foot and a half down. I can always think if we can see a foot and a half down, the carp can probably see a lot further. It's their world, isn't it? So no doubt they can see a little bit better under there than we can. Again, not a big fish, but it's a freezing cold day. And obviously with this wind in our face and a nice bit of cold rain as well. It's not making things easier. Both bites, interestingly, have been little drop backs. So obviously the fish is running towards us. And if that happens for much longer, what I might do is take maybe five meters off the cast, cast a little bit shorter. I always think that when you, when you do hook a fish and they tear off, they usually tear off to where they've just come from or maybe back to the mates or back to where they feel safe. So if I'm getting drop backs, that means the fish want to obviously come a little bit shorter. I've had a few liners as well, so that tells you that there's a few fish out there between me and the me, between me and the bait. Again, even though it's a, not a massive fish, you can just see I'm not being too brutal with it. It'd be nice to get each fish out. Obviously, in a match, you've got to make sure you hook every hook fish comes out. Dan the man, snapping away, taking some pictures. Yeah. A video in a magazine featuring one day, nice. Oh, another, another common. He's a beautiful fish as well, a lovely fish. Yeah, beautiful fish. That's the thing. I will say the fish in this lake aren't the biggest in the world, but you get a lot of nice fish in here. We'll just... Here's a cracking fish. Or not that. Look at that. Beautiful fish. Yeah, happy with that, Dan? All we'll do is probably maybe put like four or five fish in the net, just obviously so Dan's got a nice picture at the end. I don't like whacking loads and loads of fish in the net for no reason. So again, 2-0 to the white. We'll chuck out same time again. What I'll do this time is because I took the white out first last time, I know it was only maybe 20, 20 seconds difference, time-wise. But I'll chuck the red out first this time. 
So again, not too much bait around the feeder. Brand new hook bait as always, not too much bait. Just wedging that first layer in then folding the, the bait back. That's the white one done. Let's just do the red. Exactly the same. I'm leaving a bit of the bait exposed and just trying to put some pellets around the, the hook, if anything. Right, so we're casting the red one out first. Nicely down. In the rest. Out with the white. Really, really gently onto the rest. And we're fishing. And this would be really interesting now if the white one goes again. I think if it goes again, we're getting to that point where we might have to stop, sort of think about swapping the rods over and just see if it's the area rather than the bait that's uh, that's catching the fish. Just sink the line on this, this a little bit better. Perfect. Also, I think I'm going to keep a keen eye on the tips as well, because as I mentioned, I'm getting a few line bites. So I wonder if there's a few, few fish just a little bit shorter than where I'm casting to. And whether we'll catch a few more fish if maybe if I just dropped a little bit shorter. So while we're waiting for a bite, folks, let me just talk to you about my feelings towards flavorings and things like that. So obviously we've done a few videos now talking about flavorings, just slacking that off a little bit. And um, sort of the conclusion that I've come to is one, that cool water flavoring is brilliant, catches loads of fish. That's why I've put as much of it as I dare on my pellets today. But I look at flavorings now as, as like a tomato sauce when you're, using, when you're eating chips. If you've got a load of kids and you give them a load of chips and you laid out a load of plates full of chips, they're going to eat them. They're going to eat as many chips as they can. But if you've got one table that's got some tomato sauce on there and you put some tomato sauce on the chips, that's the table they're going to go to. So I don't think flavourings are the be-all and end-all, but definitely they help attract fish into your peg. That is 100% from, what, from the tests I've been doing. So... In my mind, I, th I think we know flavorings work. And I think from the last time we went Boston, we can see that the sweet flavoring was a little bit better than the savory flavoring for the style of fishing that sort of we're doing, like match, match style fishing. And that's why we need to sort of like look at hook baits now because the hook bait situation is really frying my brain. And hopefully, if we get a couple more bites on on this left hand rod, it might just put my mind at ease a little bit to, to tell me another line of them. We're, just had a, we're getting the odd liners, you know. It just might put my mind at ease to tell me that, that I have been right by using bright baits in clear water and sort of like your more darker reds and oranges and pinks and things like that in, in coloured water. Well, we've had a lovely day so far. Dan's took plenty of pictures. We've had a nice little session shooting the feature for Match Fishing Magazine, which will be out in January. And in amongst all the pictures, we've had a few fish, but I've got to tell you, they've all fell to the white bait. So what I'm gonna do now, after I've landed this fish, is I'm going to swap the rods over because I think this is number five or maybe six now on the white. And what I'm going to do is swap the rods over 
and see if it's just a little pocket of fish we're casting on or whether it's the bait doing the damage. Again, another little, little carp, little common. We're running out of time, so I think it's worth making the switch now. So maybe have one or two chucks. It's a little bit tricky to get the hook out of this guy. There we go. Lovely, lovely little common. Put him in the net for the for the catch shot. So we'll make the switch now. I'm going to swap over, red on the left hand side, white on the right hand side and just see what happens in the last 20 minutes to say whether the colour is making a difference or whether it's just a, a, a little pocket of fish that we're chucking on. But at the minute, I think that's, I'll look through the footage, but I think that's about, I think that's either five or six now to the white, zero to the red. So it's looking pretty convincing at the minute. I don't know if this is going to be my last cast. I might force another couple of casts out of the day. But we've had a brilliant day. And as you can see, I'm playing a fish on the right hand rod this time. The rod that's got the white on. So, <laughs> I think we can safely say that white has been the bait today. And it's no surprise to be fair, because the water, it, it, it's, it's tap water clear. And that white bait must stand out a mile. It's just gone round that. That rod, let's see if we can, this is the problem with fishing two rods. I think we're off it now, no. Nope. So the water is absolutely cl gin clear. And I always think a bright bait works well when the water's clear. And as I was talking about earlier, when I'm, I was waffling on about my law fishing, saying that white baits work really well in clear water. Well, I think it's the same for carp as well, you know. And especially this time of year when there's so few fish feeding. Obviously location's important, but you've still got to chuck the right thing at them. A little tiny feeder. Not a lot of bait around the feeder at all. I think it's a slightly nicer fish as well. That's the one thing that's happened today. Obviously we've got some bites early on. And then we've waited a long time in between bites. Obviously, we've been taking pictures and things for the magazine as well. But we've been waiting a long time in between bites. But when it does go round, last couple of fish have been reasonable fish. got really cold as well as soon as the sun sort of dipped down it's got really cold it's fighting hard though this fish so i think i've come to some sort of conclusion through all these flavorings and hook bait tests If I was going method feeder fishing and I wanted to choose one of those sort of designated method feeder style hook baits, I'd be definitely choosing a white one for clear water. Be saving the reds and the oranges for maybe those days when the water's a little bit more, a little bit more coloured, visibility is a bit, little bit less. And obviously, flavourings wise, we've used the, you have to use the pellets from the shop here today at Makings, but we've used the pellets from the shop and we've just added that, that swim stim cool water because obviously we've been catching on it everywhere we've been. So I'd be daft not to use it. Cracking little fish. Dan's definitely got enough pictures. You can see there, 
see if we can get a bit more line out for you so we can hold him up because you can see there the little white was he just popped no it's still there the little white bait yeah you know, dan get a picture of the white bait in his mouth little white bait in his mouth just a bit of carp juggling And I think nice little fish to end the end the session on. Got it? The one? <laughs> Cracking. Yeah, that's a lovely little fish to end the session on. I'm gonna have another chuck and I'm desperate see if I can catch one slightly bigger and maybe even see if we can get a bite on that red hook bait until next time guys make sure you subscribe make sure you buy match fishing magazine tight lines <laughs>